Burada a croeso i bob un ohonoch chi. I'r gwasanaeth boreal weddi. Welcome to you all to this service of morning prayer. We begin our worship together with our first hymn. I cannot tell why he whom angels worship should set his love upon the sons of men. Daithong ym hyd yn deulu diw, ymresyn aldeb ein tad 
i roddi i ddoddoliant a diolch, i glywed y derbyn neu aer, i gyflwyno i ddo anghenion yr holl byd ac i geisio ei ras, fel y gallwyn trwy ei fab i ysigrist, ein trwy ein hunan i wasanaeth. Jesus said the first commandment is, Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And so as we hear those commandments, we allow God's Spirit to search us. Let us confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and peace. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive us, help us to amend our lives that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. We proclaim the praise of God as we sing this version of Psalm 139. Glorious God, you reveal yourself to the world and call us to be your royal priesthood, to show forth the praises of Christ who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. May we present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, King of all kings 
and Lord of all lords. Blessed be God forever. A reading from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the law was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realised that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A song of the covenant. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Yr ail darlleniad o Sefyr Ioan, penod 53. Tranoedd penderfynodd i asu ymadal a mynd i Galilea, cafodd hyd i Philip ac meddai wrtho, canlyn fi. Gŵr o Bethsaida, tref Andreas a Peder oedd Philip, cafodd Philip hyd i Nathaniel a dweud wrtho. Yr ydym wedi ddarganfod y gŵr, yr ysgrifennydd Moses yn y gyfraith amdano, a'r proffwydi hefyd, Iesu, fab Joseph o Nazareth. Dywedodd Nathaniel wrtho, a'r dim da ddod o Nazareth. Tyrd i weld, ebe, Philip wrtho. Gwelodd Iesu Nathaniel yn dod tuag ato, ac meddai amdano. Dyma Israeliaid gwerth yr enw, heb ddim twyll ynddo. Gofynnodd Nathaniel iddo, sut y rwy'r ti yn fanabod i? A te bod iesu ef, gwelais di cyn i Philip alw arnat, pan oedd i dan y ffigysbren. Rabbi, meddai Nathaniel wrtho, ti yw mab diw, ti yw brenin Israel. A te bod iesu ef, a wyt yn credu oherwydd i mydd weud wrthyd fy mod wedi dy weld dan y ffigysbren? Ce weld pethau mwyn â hyn. Ac meddai wrtho, yn wir, yn wir, rwy'n dweud wrthych, cewch weld y nef wedi agor ac yng hylion diw, yn esgyn ac yn disgyn ar fab y dyn. Grandewch ar beth mae'r ysbryd yn gwneud i'r eglwys i fwy a bod diolch. How do we hear God's voice? And how, do we, how are we an influence in today's society? Today, there are a growing number of influencers in our society. You can see them all over YouTube, influencers. 
Some of them do good things, like Joe Wicks and his workouts. Uh, and he's been going, uh, doing workouts really throughout this pandemic. Some are not quite so good. A recent example is the awful influence of Donald Trump on his followers, who stormed the Capitol in Washington on January the 6th, and six people died. And as more details come out, you can see how terrified all those working in the Capitol were. Hopefully, Donald Trump's baleful influence will disappear soon. The point I want to make is that certain people have platforms for influence, and they can use those platforms for good or evil. How do we hear the voice of God when there are so many influences vying for our attention? This is where we come to Samuel. Samuel had been given to the Lord by his mother Hannah and was being brought up by a man called Eli in the temple. In our passage, God spoke to Samuel. Samuel thought it was Eli calling him. But at the third time of speaking, Eli realized that God was speaking to Samuel. And Samuel said, when the Lord called, Speak, for your servant is listening. What do we learn about listening to God from this passage? Well, firstly, his environment didn't matter. The Bible says the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli. And words from the Lord were rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. It was during a dark period of rebelliousness, callousness and carelessness among the people that God chose to come, and de come down and speak to a little boy called Samuel. Therefore, the state of our surroundings doesn't matter. God is still looking for someone who will be willing to listen to hear his voice and patiently listen to him without distractions. Now look where Samuel was lying down. The Bible says Samuel was lying down in the temple. It was actually a tent of meeting. As Solomon's temple, the first temple, hadn't been built yet. But he was lying down in the tent of meeting of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Samuel was in the right place to hear the voice of God. He was away from his home, lying down alone in the temple, attending to the work of God in the temple, and sleeping where the ark of God was. But look where Eli the priest was during that time. Eli was lying down in his place. His eyesight had begun to grow dim, and he couldn't see well. Eli was lying down comfortably in his place, while the boy was alone in the tent of meeting of the Lord. Moreover, not only Eli's eyesight had become dim, but his insight had become dim due to careless, lazy dozing. People who'd been doing great work for God when they were young and robust could slowly doze off when they get older. However, men like John Wesley, Billy Graham, in our, in our day, Reverend Reinhard Bonnke, the man who set Africa on fire for God, would come and preach to people with fire, even after they were over 80 years old. I listened to George Beverly Shea, who worked with Billy, Gra Billy Graham for 70 odd years, say on his 104th birthday that he thought it might be time to retire. I like that attitude. We have faithful servants of the gospel here, in our area, who are still working well into their 80s. Obviously, there are people who can't take services or preach at that age, but I think the message of this passage is to be faithful to God throughout our lives, knowing that the beginning, middle, and end of our lives is in God's hands. Samuel went on to be a great influencer in Israel. He was a prophet, priest, and judge. God used Samuel to show that David would be king in Israel after Saul. While Samuel was alive, he was the greatest influence in Israel. Both Samuel and David also foreshadow, they prefigure Jesus Christ, who is the supreme prophet and our great high priest. Jesus is not judge, just a judge over Israel, but will judge the whole world at his return. Jesus is also King of Israel, King of the Jews, and will reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What a glorious day that will be when Jesus returns. 
Samuel was the greatest influence in Israel during his lifetime because he knew the God of Israel. He spent time alone with God. Now isolation and separation are very difficult for people who live active lives. We are people who love to be busy with our computers, mobile phones, friends, iPods and iPads. But sometimes God has to tear us apart from these in order to speak to us. However, in the last year, many of us have become experts in self-isolation and being separate from one another because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I would suggest that amid all the difficulties isolation and separation bring, that we can use this time to get to know and love God better. An evangelist who spent time with God in prayer said this, I began to realise that the light filling my prayer closet was, God, was God's glory. It wasn't that my prayer closet door had opened, but the door of heaven. The presence of God was so real and so powerful that I felt I would die there right on my knees. It seemed that if God came any closer, I could not stand it. Yet I wanted it and was determined to have it. So how does this passage apply to us here in Cardigan, Kilgarran, St Dogmouth, or wherever we are today? There are at least three ways this wonderful story about Samuel can be applied to our lives. Firstly, we cannot do a lot about our circumstances, but we can choose how we react to them. Samuel was living under Eli, a priest who had grown idle and corrupt, but God spoke to him even as he was being brought up by Eli. Secondly, we can get to know God better by spending time in prayer, worship, and getting to know the Bible better. And finally, we can be an influence for God and for good wherever we are and whoever we are. When God told Samuel to choose David as king over Israel, everyone was surprised. David was the youngest of eight sons of Jesse. He was very young, probably in his teens. But God saw David's heart as a heart after God's own heart. Because Samuel listened to God, David became the greatest king over Israel until Jesus Christ. We can use the opportunities we have, even in this pandemic, to be an influence for good and for God.
Let us affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And as we come together in prayer now, in unity. Through time and every circumstance, O Lord, you call us and you search us. All our ways are known to you who has triumphed, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Root of David. May your hand guide us, your right hand hold us fast, when we falter, when we weary, when we feel we can bear no more. Out of the deep from that call, speak that we may hear your voice. Lord, in unity with your spirit, hear our prayer. Dad Dragoidol, sin ewellysio bod a holl blant yn un ynod, gweddiwn am undo dy eglwys, hynny mewn i fi ddod i thfwyd a thwyrionydd, pan wynebwn fyd o berygl a dryswch, Lle mae ffydd yn tyfu'n wan, wrth i ymheon a dioddefon gynyddu, cadwan i yn gadarn i dy ffordd mewn gweddi ac addoliau. Rhodd tywallt yr ysbryd lân, fel allai fy bobl wel disgleirieb, dywirioneb a ceisio dy ddewrder yn eu calonau a dy nannebydd dros ein eneidiau. Arglwydd yn undod dy ysbryd, gwrando ein gweddi. O God of all nations, who has given us a pledge of your promised kingdom, help us to shun evil throughout these days that we may stand. Give the leaders of nations the grace of your light to shine within their hearts, that they may increase in those good works that you have prepared for them to walk in and truly be a blessing to their peoples. Lord, in unity with your Spirit, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, give your mercy, we pray, to refugees scattered across the world, victims of war and persecution, tyranny and oppression. Save them from despair, heal bitterness, and give them hope. As they suffer at the hands of their fellow human beings, may we also never forget their needs, and may the causes of their homelessness be rooted out of our world, we pray. Lord, in unity with your spirit, hear our prayer. Gan ein bod wedi cael y darlun gwych hwn nhw heddiw o agoriad y nefoedd ac anghylion diw yn esgyn ac yn disgyn ar fab dyn. Rhodd dy gymorth i ni i sylweddoli ein gwir warch geidwad sy'n gweld ein meddyliau, sy'n gyfarwydd an holl ffyrdd, creawdwr a chynhaliwr y byd drwy garos. Gadewch i ni gan mol brenin y nef ac addoli yn enw gogeneddus y tad, y mab a'r ysbrydlan, yn awr ac anhorth ddyddiau. Arglwydd, yn undod yr ysbryn, grando ein gweddi. So let us pray with confidence to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily day bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. Make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Oddi yw, awdi i'r tanni fydd a carwr chatindeb, y mae dyd na bod di yn fywyd trygwyddol, a thwasanaethu yn rhyddid perffaith, am ddiffyn ni rhag holl y mosodiadau ein gylynion, fel a ni na'n llwyr yn ddiried yn dynoddyd, nad ofn nhw'n allu neb o'n gwrthwynebwyr. Trwy Iesu Christ, dein harglwydd. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new day. Defend us by your mighty power that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger and enable us in everything to do only what is right in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I will.
Diolch yn fawr am y mino o ni. Bore yma, thank you for joining us this morning and I pray that you're all keeping well and safe. Ragloid a vog ar a chwi. A hefyd gyda chi. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. To bendeth you hot a llio, gytard a mab ar a spriglar, a bonech plith a cadrigo gyr a chwi yn wastad. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.